<laughs> Welcome to my channel. My name is Louisa, and this is my channel, The Ever Growing Mommy. Thank you so much for stopping by. I wanted to give a quick intro to this video because I didn't really give an intro, and so this is the first video of my experience, my testimony, my story of going on my social media fast. I hope that it blesses you. Thank you so much for stopping by. There is so many other videos that you could choose and the fact that you're watching this one, it really truly means a lot to me. Um, it is my goal, it is my dream, and it is my passion to learn and grow and change and share what I learn. And so, and share my experiences. That is the passion and purpose of my channel. To uplift you, to give you insight of just a different perspective, other ideas as I'm learning them. Because I think that that's sharing is scary. <laughs> you know, to not be so choosy, sharing is caring. It really, really, truly is. So, let's go ahead and get into this segment of my story, my experience, and my testimony of my social media fast. What's up, y'all? It's Louisa. Okay, I am here with yours, yours truly, my husband, Jacob. He is not a um, camera person, so... Sure, I am. <laughs> I'm just borrowing him for a quick second so that he can share his thoughts on, hold on. What's up y'all? Okay. Now we have my husband and I'm going to give you his perspective of what he saw, kind of like how I was, what his perspective was of me before my fast on social media and no contact with people, I guess changes that he saw. So. Honey. Yes. <laughs> okay. How do you think, what is your perspective of me as far as um, my mental state, my um, emotions, me as a person, my character before I went on my social media fast? Before that? Yeah. So name things that you saw that really needed change. For you? Yeah. Attitude. And you can be honest. Attitude adjustment. <laughs> and we're going to talk to the people here. Yeah. Attitude adjustment. Um, patience. Um, well, I would say... Not patience, but impatience. You were very impatient on everything. And, um. Okay, so what do you think about my time while, before I went on social media? Like, how was my time management? To you, what did it look like was most important to no, me? No, everything was, except you were just always in a hurry and you were always full of anxiety and uh, you were very snappy and snappy at everyone else. Like, you can't, ask, you can't even ask her a question or you did something wrong. Right? <laughs> Am I right, bro? Yeah, I'd say you were about right. And I'm okay with him saying that because I'm very aware. I'm very much aware as well like nobody's perfect everybody's has their own flaws everybody's you know we all have things that we have to work on and this is part of working on me myself part of as a mom as a wife but also as a person and as a christian things that i did not realize was going on within even though i was sharing scripture on social media i was sharing you know, reading promises from the Bible and social media, the reality is I'm still a person just like anybody else. And there is always going to be something 
there's always going to be something that we're going to have to work on because we're human. But if we don't take the time to recognize those things, it's just um, we're never going to get better mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Like we're always going to live in the constant um, same state of mind. And that's what I knew I did not want. I knew that there was something wrong and I needed change. And so, let me ask, what changes did you see in me during the whole social media fast? Uh, I think you were more just relaxed and uh, less anxious. And... Um, just a little more carefree and not so uptight. <laughs> yeah, I think I was too. Yeah. It's hard not to get in trouble around here. <laughs> but do you think, how do you think like me as treating others like you and the kids, how do you think, do you see it? Did you see a change in that? Hmm, how should I say it? Like... You were more, I guess, open without a cloud in mind. You were present mm -hmm. more so. Yeah. Instead of someone asking you a question and then, <laughs> and then you snap at them because that question is not part of your brain's agenda, <laughs> then you you were more uh, open to. Uh, to other people and other people approaching you for anything. And by other people, he means him and the kids. Really. Mostly yeah. me. <laughs> 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 Lord knows I've tried to stay away. <laughs> we might need marriage counseling. Uh, no, but I think that you're right. I do. So just, if it's okay to share, just so y'all know, my husband is not on social media. My husband lives the life that I want to live, except I still want to be on social media because I feel called in a certain way, in a different way than what I was on social media for. But he's not on social media. He, he's not on Facebook. He's, he has an account. He's never on it. He's not on Instagram. He's not on anything, nothing, really, truly. And he lives the most carefree. He lives the most carefree <laughs> life. And I wouldn't say, yeah, carefree. He has, he's not anxious. He's not, um, he's not comparing himself ever. He knows who he is. He's confident with who he is. But truly, he is confident in who he is. He knows his strengths, he knows his weaknesses. Doesn't mean he's perfect, you know, like anybody, he has his flaws. But in that area of social media, like it, I can see the difference in lifestyle between us both because I'm on it, but now at a more controlled way where he is not on it at all. And he has peace of mind. He's not offended all the time. He's not at peace. Calm. That's the word. Yeah. Calm. Okay, so the next question. What did you see me do more during my social media fast as far as for myself than when I wasn't than I, when I was not fasting? Uh, I think I I think that you took more time to relax yeah. because I always tell you how important it is to be able to relax for your own peace of mind and uh, I think it's good for everybody to be able to literally relax and de-stress and um, kind of give your brain time 
to slow down and filter out all of the nonsense that doesn't need to be there to kind of not necessarily escape reality but to slow down mm -hmm. and to give your brain your mind your body time to process everything and uh i think it's really good for anybody and i try to tell you all the time to do that yeah because i know that i do it and I, sometimes it bothers you that i do it but I know that I need it for myself. And I think that you being able to do that, to do that more has, has helped you. Yeah, I agree. Definitely, yeah. Okay, sorry about the lighting. We have to, we had to move. We have a full house, so it's really hard to find a moment of quietness. <laughs> but this is actually where I spent a lot of my time during my social media fast. So back to the question that I asked my husband, as far as me letting everybody know that I'm not going to be reachable, I'm not going to be reaching out, responding right now, I'm going to be away from my phone, literally off my phone. Um, how do you think that that affected me during this time in a good way? Well, I think that it took a lot of stress off of you because, um, I don't know, it's weird as some someone could talk to you and um I guess because you're an emotional person. You, you say you, emotional, I say empathetic, you, sympathetic. Uh, I'm an empath. I, I don't know. You um you're very affected by other people and other people's words and other people's comments or uh, um, just other people in general I guess I would say you were just very uh, affected by outside entities and uh, I think that uh, you not kind of being the person who is always uh, open to everyone you you kind of uh, you're like a sponge to everybody's comments and complaints and problems and, and I think you kind of shutting yourself off from that for a while was good for you um, I don't know I don't know how you're like that. I, I, I mean, I'm speaking from a guy's point of view. Yeah. Like I could talk to 10 people in a day and not one of them, not one of, <laughs> not one thing that any of them could say is going to affect my day. Yeah. <laughs> but with you, with you, it's kind of different. Um, I don't know, I think it made you definitely uh, happier because also other people would affect you in a way that uh, you would um, in turn, you kind of took it out on everybody here at the house. Yeah. If someone like pissed you off, <laughs> then everybody else felt uh, the brunt of your your anger <laughs> to be honest it's okay you can be honest okay that was not um that was the truth like that that's the truth some things are very uncomfortable to hear from you know, when you are a person that is trying to like work on yourself and and heal and learn and grow, you're gonna always come to situations, truths of other people that is very uncomfortable and hard to hear. But 
it's in love. Now, if my husband were to be saying that, like, as in a demeaning way and shaming way, then I, of course, would not open myself up to trying to change or do better or learn and grow. I, w I think that I would be prideful and, you know, no, a denying, right? Mm -hmm. Deny it and prideful. But I, I know for me as a mom, as a wife, but as a Christian, as a believer, as someone who loves God, I want to change. I want to grow. I want to learn not just about my faith, but also about myself. And part of learning about your faith, you have to face things that are not, um, that are not pretty, things that are uncomfortable. And so... Thank you. I'm glad that you're being open and honest. Which these things I already knew from him before. So this is not like news to me. Okay. So last last question, I think. <laughs> How do you think that this affected me spiritually? Because the whole purpose of this fast was to... Anytime a person's fasting spiritually... It's to d take out anything that's distracting them from being connected with God, being um, spending time with God. How, and that's really what I wanted to do. It was God and you and the kids that I wanted to spend my time with. And so, but more so with God. How do you think that that, did you see a change in me as far as my faith and spiritually my time with God and me my moods me as a person well it uh, definitely freed up freed up a whole lot of time for you to uh, be able to pray and to be able to worship and that is kind of another reason or point of emphasis on being able to relax because if you can't put yourself in a relaxing mood or state of mind you can't really focus and if you can't focus you can't focus on God especially and you can't pray and worship in a uh, in a uh, like with a pure heart a pure mm -hmm. mind you know when your when your mind is always clouded with things that uh, kind of are insignificant, especially when it comes to uh, things that really matter. I think, and uh, so it gave it gave you more time to be able to focus and more time to uh, turn your attention to God more time to pray and to worship and uh, to really be able to focus on God and and uh, keep your focus on God and not to lose or to be distracted or to be um, even slightly um, distracted from things from the outside you know there's a lot of distractions that are there always they're always going to be there but you you made the choice to get rid of those distractions and it did good it did good for you and it did good for all of us peace <laughs> thank you baby you're welcome Okay, any advice to anybody who is, um, who has a woman that really is not aware of her habits? Because I really think that I had a lot of ungodly habits, meaning like I was a people pleaser and I was constantly, um, I'm an em empath, meaning I, I bear the burdens of others, which... 
<laughs> we are not we are not God. We can't save people. We can't we we're not the savior of the world. And sometimes, you know, we Christians mean well, but don't realize that we're stepping on God's toes. Like we have a specific part in a person's life but it's not God's part that's not and I think that a lot of us get into the role of being trying to be like little God trying to fix everything do everything be everything and we just can't do that and and a lot of that is is pride we're not believing we're not having faith that okay I don't know I just feel like I had a really hard time seeing that I was trying to help and be there for all people that I love but at the end of the day I had to come to the truth is that I'm not God I can't do all and be all and I had to come to a place of surrender and learn boundaries and learn um, really my place my place as a person my place as a as a friend my place as a mom as a wife an employee um i think i had a lot of i have dealt with a really bad spirit which is a spirit of control wouldn't you say mm -hmm. so what advice could you give a husband who has a wife that is in similar situation with a, a wife that's very anxious, just a go, 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 can't slow down, is nonstop? What advice could you give that husband? Well, that's assuming that he, that he is not the same way. Uh, as her for one but um i mean i don't know i think uh i think just try to be patient and try to get her to realize her ways in a nice way pray for her pray for her pray with her um you know try to introduce her to things that will help her to slow down and um you know i don't, I don't know I, well, let me say something one of the things that i wanted to share about my husband this is not like a marriage that we're going on this is not supposed to be like this is not a marriage topic but i mean video but one of the things that has been the greatest blessing of my life is my husband <laughs> really truly because it wasn't until I got we we met each other and we really got to know each other that I started to see that there was things about me that needed to change like he is very organized he is very um, determined to get things done. He's very focused. He is not a people pleaser. He is, um, there's just a lot of ways that he, he is that I am not. And I would love to live that kind of life. I just don't know how. And, um, and he's helped me in a lot of ways. He's helped me see certain people that are no longer in my life um in a different way that i wasn't able to see because all i could see was but i love them but i love them but he helped me to see that you know yes you love them but they are not healthy for you right mm -hmm. yep. but it wasn't in a way that it was bashing the person it was more of just letting me see his perspective. But you, also it takes open-minded person to hear someone else's perspective, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, honey. I appreciate you. No problem. <laughs>
All right, y'all, this is gonna end this part of the video. My husband did a great job. Give him a round of applause. Anything else you want to say, honey? Peace. <laughs> He's so ready. Peace and love, baby. <laughs> I love you. Okay, you guys, that concludes the first half of my social media testimonial story and experience. You got to see my husband's point of view, and I was really, um, I was happy to share that with y'all. That was something that is very private, but I felt like would be helpful to somebody. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, if you would consider to subscribe, I would really appreciate that. It would help my channel grow. You know that YouTube has their algorithm, but I got the God rhythm. <laughs> I've been praying over my videos and really truly believing that he's gonna help grow my channel regardless. But thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you in my next video where it will be a very personal and private um, conversation just me and you all about my experience and my story my perspective of the social media fast it is a story that I think that someone needs to hear and it will be very helpful and I know that there's someone out there that is going to touch so stay tuned it will be coming very soon